Hi there, Lindsay here, The Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to talk about why it's so important to match your paper to your medium. And while we're chatting about that, I'm going to sketch a strawberry using some new color pencils I was giving a whirl and some paper that's actually new to me. Now this was a sample that I received from Jerry's Artorama when I placed an order last summer. I had bought some pastels and they sent a four inch by six inch piece of Lux archival paper. Now this is a very gritty paper that is made by a company called Brush and Pencil, and they sell a lot of really excellent colored pencil accessories. They sell a product called Powder Blender, which is this fine powder that you can use to help your pencils blend, kind of like pastels. They sell a product called Touch Up Texture, which looks like a nail polish bottle, and you can paint it on areas of your painting where you need more grit. They also sell a product called Titanium White, which you can mix with a touch up texture and make archival highlights, it won't flake off. Um, they sell a couple fixatives that are really nice and they also sell this paper. Now I purchased every one of their products except for this paper a few years ago. Um, and I mean, I just had so many papers. I'm like, I really don't need any more papers, but I was excited to give this a try and a free sample in an order is perfect because you don't have to make it precious or worry about it. Cause a lot of times these more sanded type of papers, these, these coated papers are kind of pricey and I'm not exactly sure what the price on this on like a full pack of this paper would be, but I'm sure it's right up there with pastel mat and, uh, UART and other, um, comparable papers. So I'm using a pretty firm pencil. I tend to, if I'm going to use a sanded paper, I will use it with harder pencils because um, I'll be able to get the color down more quickly. I don't have to press so hard. It saves fatigue on my hands. And um, the big reason though is it makes it go quicker. And I am kind of uh, impatient when it co comes to color pencils. I prefer to use them in a mixed media fashion over watercolor, over markers as part of something else and not start to finish color pencils. Unless I'm doing um, like, uh, I don't know, I like using like Derwent Light Fast pencils from start to finish because they're nice and soft. I can kind of mix them as I go. They blend really easily um, and they're, they're very, they feel very soft to me where these, these pencils here feel very hard. These pencils are um, by Anstel Stationery Shop. They are definitely a polychromos wannabe dupe type pencil, but they're actually a very good copy. Uh, they're only available on AliExpress as far as I know, and I did review this product. The, the video's up on my YouTube channel if you want more information about these pencils, but for all intents and purposes, they're they're very much like polychromos. So that harder lead works really well with a sanded paper. So knowing that you can select the best papers to go with the products that you're using. For instance, I wouldn't want to use a hard lead colored pencil on marker paper because marker paper is so slick, nothing would want to stick. That, that hard pencil would just resist the paper. Just like I wouldn't use markers on watercolor paper because if I used markers, like alcohol markers on watercolor paper, it would just suck the ink out of the marker like a sponge and it would be really dark. It wouldn't blend. My markers would wear out quicker. It would wear the nibs down because of the roughness. It, they would be mismatched. So when you figure out how you like to work, what mediums you like, you can choose papers that are more appropriate for what you like to do. And the best way to figure that out is to experiment. If you can find sample packs of different papers, it's a great way to go. If you have friends that do the same type of work that you do, you guys can share papers with each other and then you can figure out what you like the best. I remember when I was first getting into markers, I had some friends online and we, do, we would share papers. We would share different cardstocks we had to see what worked best for our styles. And um, something that works great for one person might not be good for the next person. My favorite paper might not be your favorite paper. I have been really enjoying the uh, Canson XL mixed media, dry mixed media sand grain paper with pencils because it's got that pebbly texture that works really well with my softer pencils. I don't know how well it would do with these. These might be too hard for it, but um, you know, knowing how you like to work, do you like to layer? Do you need to put a lot of layers? If you like to use pencils and put tons and tons of layers, maybe pastel mat would be a more appropriate paper for you. If you're going to put you know, 10 hours into a painting, you might be willing to spend a couple dollars on a sheet of paper because you know that your joy of working for those 10 hours on that paper is worth the financial investment of that better paper. Maybe you are doing some printmaking and then doing some mixed media on top and, you know, you're going to crank out a ton of different artworks in the course of a day. Maybe you want to go with something cheaper. Maybe you want to go with a cardstock or with a Bristol or with um, like that, the Canson mixed media paper or any of the Canson papers that are a little bit cheaper. You know, finding that sweet spot is really going to make your artwork shine 
feeling. It's going to make you feel not so precious about your materials and it's going to really help you grow as an artist. So let me know in the comments down below, what's your favorite medium and what's your favorite paper? So that will help other users, other people that watch this video, maybe they're new to a different media, maybe they're new to pastels or they're new to colored pencils or watercolors or whatever, and they don't know what to pick. So that would be super helpful if you would say what medium you work in and what's your favorite paper and tell us why. I want to gather that information. I think it'd be super helpful for anyone watching this. Now, as you can see, I put quite a few layers on this. This was a really fun um, picture to draw. I don't know why I revert back to strawberries a lot when I am testing out pencils. I think it's because I like the, uh, the to test the depth of color, to test the um, if you can layer dark over light and light over dark, and to test the saturation. Um, and plus it's fun to draw shiny things, but I rarely ever record them. So I thought I would just turn the camera on while I was doing this. So that way uh, people that have wondered how I draw strawberries, maybe they've seen them in the past on Instagram or whatever, they'll just have a quick little... Um, a little step-by-step -step they can watch and kind of get the gist. Uh, lots of layers. I do like to come in and finish up with a gel pen, even though I have the uh, the product that's archival on there. This is just a little sketch. I'm not uh, going to be doing anything important with it. Maybe I'll put it on a card. I don't know. But I just want to finish it up with some glossy highlights at the end. And this paper can handle that because it's got a little bit of texture to it, actually quite a bit of texture to it. So I would actually buy a pack of this paper. I think this would work really well with my style. And um, I really liked working on it. So it's fun to experiment with different papers. I would say don't jump around two different papers while you're learning a medium too much because it, having to adapt to new papers every single time you sit down to work can be uh, can set you back a bit and can be very frustrating. But once you're relatively used to a medium, trying a few papers is not going to hurt. Try different textures and see what you really like. And then you'll be able to predict as you go on, you'll be able to predict better what kind of papers will suit you. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this little time lapse. Until next time, happy crafting.